Because the thing is, the joy of it is, like whatever, of the Irish people, where are the Irish people again? Yeah. Who's the most recent immigrant among you? <laughs> Let's go back. Who, who's only been out of the, where, where you, how long are you out of the country, sir? Two weeks. Two weeks? That's pretty recent as an immigrant, it has to be said, right? The thing about Ireland is, Ireland is a bit of cash. We've changed in our... Oh, we've changed. Oh, this is our favourite line about ourselves. Oh, two weeks, you can never go back. You won't recognise the place when you go back. It's changed. Oh, those two weeks, the country's gone so much different. It, you wouldn't recognise it. You can never go back. We're loving this about ourselves because we finally got a bit of cash in our pockets and we love the notion, oh, we're not the same place we were. We've lost our soul, we've lost our spirit. We're exactly the same age as we always were, right? But with a bit of cash. There's no change. Well, there's one change in Ireland. Baguettes. <laughs> there's a lot more baguettes in Ireland <laughs> than there ever were when I was growing up there. <laughs> Even in the two weeks since you left, my friend, that place has gone baguette crazy. <laughs> you can't move for baguettes. When I was there, a sandwich was a sandwich. Bit of bread, bit of ham, bit of cheese. Here's another bit of bread. That's a sandwich. Now it's second baguettes in every direction. <laughs> but I'll say this for the Irish. We do baguettes in a way that no French person has ever done baguettes. <laughs> we have a unique take on the baguette that the French could only dream of. No French person in history has ever walked into a baguetteria or whatever the hell the name of the shop is. <laughs> What's the name of the place that sells baguettes? A baguette shop. Yeah, I meant in Paris. <laughs> you shop de baguette. What's it called? It's called a boulangerie, of course it is. In fact, I know that. I just love getting people to shout out boulangerie in the middle of a gig, because it's the sexiest kind of lingerie. <laughs> what are you wearing tonight? My boulangerie. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love the way the tits light up. I know. It's great. <laughs> no one has ever walked into a boulangerie and gone, je veux une baguette. And they've gone, ah, oh, tu veux une baguette? Nous sommes une boulangerie. Nous avons beaucoup de baguettes. Qu'est-ce que tu veux dans la baguette? Peut-être le jambon ou le fromage? No Parisian has ever gone, no, je veux pas le jambon, ni le fromage. Je veux un full Irish breakfast. <laughs> we, we exactly hash browns, beaucoup de hash browns. <laughs> Unless you're not any baked beans, aussi, beaucoup de baked beans, right? <laughs> now I wrap it in cling film, I'll put it in the passenger seat of the car. Right, so. <laughs> But the fact that in Ireland we went all the way from being stupid ones to being Nobel laureate, river dancing, chorus, whatever that we are at the moment, right? These tags are so arbitrary, they're so randomly assigned, whatever. That, and as a comedian, if you work for a while, you spot that there are just buttons you can press with regard to the peoples of the world, right? Because we basically, all of us, have a list in our head of the countries we know, and we've one or two words beside to describe the people in them, right? Because we're busy people, we can't have fully formed impressions of all the people in the world, right? So we, it narrows down to a couple of very common phrases all the time. Right? My friend from California, you may wish to block your ears just for a tiny moment of this thing. Right? <laughs> I'll give you an example. If I said to you, Americans, uh, what are they like as people? Americans are <laughs> fat and <laughs> stupid. Those are the two things. <laughs> Every gig I do, fat and stupid. The French are <laughs> arrogant and <laughs> smelly. That's it. <laughs> Every gig, the same two words. The Dutch are stoned, right? That's that. <laughs> it's harsh, but like you know, and clearly these things aren't true. But the joy of this thing is, you can do that for a few different countries, right? But then it peters out quite dramatically when you get a little bit outside of Europe, right? Or outside the English speaking spaces. None of us, as a crowd, would go Slovenia. Ah, joys, those feckers. Ah, sure, they're you know, uh, you know, rampant and you know, and well read. I don't. We don't have. <laughs> Phrases for all these people. Oh, the Tongans are tall and, and well mannered. It just it, <laughs> We don't have phrases for all the countries of the world. And there's loads of obscure countries in the world that we know nothing about, right? So feck it, we should just make shit up. <laughs> Every five years in the UN, there should be a draw, like a giant bow, like the FIFA draw. And the ambassador from a country, name for me a very obscure country. Cork. Cork. Right? <laughs> Terribly obscure country, not legally based on anything, by the way. More obscure than that. Well, give me a name of the obscure country. Swaziland. Perfect example. The Swaziland ambassador has to walk down and rustle the paper up and hold it up, and it just says, shite at small talk. <laughs> and then for the next five years, every time you hear about Swaziland, you go, oh, jeez, a shite at small talk. The Swaziland is happening. Oh, sure, I met a lad from Swaziland. I said, how is your wife? He said, she's very dry. <laughs> 
You mean she's a very dry sense of humour? That's not what I mean at all. <laughs> but I'm shite at small talk. <laughs> and you can just make this stuff up, for God's sake. Another obscure country. Angola, perfect example. Who among us truly knows about the Angolans? Who among us has studied, has lived, has travelled? Who among us has seen from the passenger seat of a jet plane what the people of Angola are truly like? One man. One man knows what the Angolans... I'm working up to you, by the way, here. It's got <laughs> He could describe for us in a couple of words the characteristic, the not physical, personality traits, come up with a couple of ones now, that perfectly sum up the Angolans. Scott, in your wide-ranging RAF-based knowledge, the Angolans are... Angry. Angry and... <laughs> violent. Vi angry and violent. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a huge, broad spectrum of personality here, is it? <laughs> Luckily, they combined their anger with a bit of violence, so it all works out well for them. Let's try one more. What did you say? Oh, Vanu Vanuatu. Very good. You're loving that, aren't you? You're very happy to shout out Vanuatu. The people of Vanuatu are... Vacuous. Vacuous. Good answer. I like the way you're thinking here, right? <laughs> Vacuous and... Unknown. Unknown. <laughs> the people of Vanuatu are vacuous and unknown. <laughs> I'm surprised they've remained so unknown, given that when you finally get to know them, there's nothing there. <laughs> you should see them stuck on a lift with the Angolans. Oh, the Angolans are kicking off in a huge way. But the Vanuatu people have no opinion to offer in the situation. I know, it's slow, but is it? I don't know. I have nothing to say about the whole thing. Okay. And you're kind of wondering, Dar, what's the point of this? The point of this is, in a week's time, there will be a news report where they say, and there is a situation brewing at the moment in Vanuatu, and you're going to go, oh, those vacuous pricks. <laughs> Hi, this is Dara Breen. This is my YouTube channel, so subscribe and like to get more funny clips.